If you didn't know better, you'd think every 3D printer costs over $500 now. So today, we're going to talk about this Elegoo Neptune 4 with a little side note about this Mingda Magician X2. Both of these printers are at the $259 price point, which is a lot less expensive than a lot of the machines I've been reviewing lately. Long story short, I love this printer, this Elegoo Neptune 4. They're not paying me to say that, but if they wanted to pay me to say that, I would accept their money. Basically, it's just a really refined and fast version of an Ender 3. It's got clipper on there, it's got a direct drive all metal extruder. It looks great, it's a very fast printer. It's got this auxiliary part cooling fan so that when you're printing at really high speeds, you'll be able to keep the print cool. It's got every feature you can imagine on a budget machine like this and some bonus features that are really welcomed. Everything on here seems really well thought out and it's pretty easy to put together. But the only downside that I can see is that it doesn't have working Wi-Fi out of the box. You have to have a wired LAN connection. So I just have this machine plugged into this tiny wireless router. You can plug it into your main router at your house as long as you can have a uh, Ethernet cable that reaches over to it. The other option is to get a wireless USB adapter and plug it into the main board on this machine and you know figure out how to install the drivers and get that hooked up to your network. This printer represents some of the best value that you can get in 3D printing. Let's say you don't have $500 to $1,000 to spend to get a K1 or a K1 Max or a P1S. Well, this is a really good accessible option for getting into 3D printing. $260 is just an incredible deal and I've just been having nothing but good experiences with this machine. I mean, basically, it's everything that an Ender 3 clone should be. It's fast, reliable, high print quality, it's got bed leveling. Sorry for being an Elegoo shill this episode. Um, they're not paying me to say this, this is just my honest opinions about this thing. It's been really good and fun to use. Alright, and uh, let's just cover the Mingda Magician X2 for just a second here. As you can see, I'm using it as a spool holder, and this costs an identical amount of money as this machine, $260. So for $260 you can get a high speed, nice, reliable printer, or for $260 you can get a printer that, as soon as you turn it on, it starts overheating the uh, hot end, so it poses a potential fire hazard and just doesn't work out of the box. Yep, that's right, I got this machine from Mingda and it just doesn't work. Um, if you had to choose between two, these two machines, I would definitely pick the Neptune 4. There's also the Neptune 4 Pro, which as far as I can tell, there's just a few upgrades on there. It's got metal rails for the X and Y axes. They're not linear rails, which are like those really high quality motion control components. And they're not linear rods like what you find on a Prusa i3 printer. It's got these kind of hybrid rails where it's got these steel roller bearings that are running on two metal rods that are embedded into an aluminum extrusion and it's just kind of like a weird hybrid system. Personally, I don't really like it because any of the printers that I've used that use that are a little louder and um, have a little bit more artifacting on the prints. This is less expensive. It uses the tried and true V-groove wheels which are quieter and in my experience have smoother print results. So why pay more for that when you can just spend as little as possible and get a nice fast printer like this. I'll turn this on for a second here just so that you can see some of its features. Um, it's nice and quiet when it's printing. You do have a little bit of power supply noise at idle when you turn this machine on. Here we go. You want to hear the, the fan noise. It's really not that bad. Check out some of these lights. We've got our overhead light up here and an observational light down here. So just a little LED built into the hot end. We've got a fan. So here's the part cooling fan. It's actually quite powerful. If that's not providing enough part cooling, we can turn on the auxiliary part cooling fan on the back here. And that blows like a giant sheet of air across the entire top surface here. The part cooling is great on this machine. It's got this nice touch interface as well that you can pick up and, you know, use this as a handheld mode. You got a nice preview of the parts that you're going to print. And if you don't want to use that touch interface, you can do everything through the typical clipper interface. I think it's fluid that's running on this machine. So you can pull up that web interface and upload prints and start print jobs and manage acceleration and speed settings and stuff. So overall, it's a very functional machine and I'm a huge fan of what we've got here. So uh, yeah, it's got an inductive probe, so that's how it's managing to do mesh bed leveling. They really didn't leave any features out here. I can't say enough good things about this machine, especially at the price point that it's coming in at. 
Also, I've been trying out this tricolor filament from Soval. It's really cool stuff. Basically, there's three colors built into the same uh, piece of filament. And depending on your viewing angle, it'll change what color you see. So here's some of the prints that I made with it. It's got this cool oil slick look to it where just depending on the angle that you're looking, it either looks reddish or bluish or greenish. And it's all shiny and dark. Here's your print quality also. Um, this was printed, I think it was going like 100 to 150 millimeters per second. And then I cranked it up to 200% print speed. So it was doing like um, up to like 300 millimeters per second. And you can see the print quality is quite nice despite those high speeds. And then I sliced and printed this little thing, which is just a little channel logo. And it looks really good as well. Here's that oil slick type coloring that changes depending on the angle. But yeah, this one was printing with travel moves at 500 millimeters per second. Most of the actual printing was done at around 300 millimeters per second. Some features were a little bit faster, some were a little bit slower. But yeah, 300 millimeters per second on a bed slinger that's cheap like this, that's insane. Given the price of the machine, that's less than a dollar per millimeter per second. We're going to be making up all sorts of metrics to describe how good this thing is per dollar. All right, so yeah, we're getting started up here. Funny enough, they're using the exact same USB drive that I, I ate one of those before in my Matrix skit. And it's the same USB drive that the Creality K1 comes with. So now the bed is heated up and we're just waiting for the nozzle to heat up and we'll get started there. In terms of the bed leveling, um, it's got bed leveling knobs. So I did the manual bed leveling first and then I did the mesh bed leveling. And then those two together kind of give you a really good result in terms of a, uh, a flat bed that's giving you a good mesh. The mesh ended up with variants of about negative 0.1 millimeter to plus 0.1 millimeter across the entire surface of the bed. So very flat bed there as well. And now we're going to get started with this print. But yeah, very quiet operation. You can barely hear the stepper motors on this thing. I might actually open this up and replace the hot end fan with a cooler or a quieter version. But as you can hear, we're printing away right now and you can barely hear anything. I'm going to get the good old decibel meter out and give us some empirical data. Right up next to the machine, it's 54 decibels. I'm going to stand an arm's length away and just tell you what it's, it's reading. We're at 44 decibels at an arm's length away from the machine. So incredibly quiet here. There's just so much to like about this machine. I might need to change my Z offset a little bit. Z offset, we'll move it up. It's just one of those machines that you get it working and it just provides excellent prints for you right out of the box. Setup and installation took under 30 minutes. I'm shilling hard for this one because I genuinely like this product and it's one that I'd totally recommend to anyone who's looking for a cheap printer that gets the job done. It gets you the speed, the reliability, and just cranks out basic PLA parts like this. Plus it's got clipper, so in terms of upgradability and doing extra programming to speed things up, it's going to be excellent for that. But as you can see, it's pretty quick. This is just the first layer, so it's not like doing super fast printing right now. But uh, after we get to the second layer, I suppose it's going to speed up a little bit. And it'll turn those part cooling fans on, which will produce a little bit of noise. So this is what it sounds like with all of the part cooling fans on at full blast. I'm going to do the arm's length away test again. Here we are an arm's length away from the machine. That's actually pretty loud at 65 decibels. But if we turn off that auxiliary part cooling fan, that big one in the back, and again, arm's length away, 55 decibels, really not too bad. And I think you can get away with turning the fan speed down a bit. So I'm going to turn the fan speed down to, we'll call it 50%. This isn't a crazy part that has a ton of overhangs, so I don't need full fan speed for this thing to get good print results. And again, arm's length away. Let's measure it one more time. 48 decibels. So, you know, very quiet machine, efficient, cheap. There's all sorts of good attributes for this machine. Again, the only downside is that kind of weird Wi-Fi setup that I had to do. So you can see I've plugged in the LAN cable here to my little travel router, to this travel router right here. Aside from that small little quirk to get my online functionalities working, this thing is great. 
Then uh, here's that little power cable that I was telling you about. So it's just like a little power plug in case you want to run some additional accessories on this machine. And I could probably run a laser engraver off of this machine's power supply just with this plug in the back. It's got a direct tap into the power supply. So you have access to a 24 volt source up to 2.5 amps, which should be sufficient to run pretty much any little accessories that you want to plug in. If you want to run your own Raspberry Pi on this, then you could. And then like, let's look at the IO here real quick. There's a micro SD card slot right there, a USB-C slot and a USB-A slot. And then there's this cable that goes to our little screen over here. Part cooling solution is pretty interesting. It just blows a sheet of air across the entire top surface of the part to get extra air moving and to cool off parts if you're trying to print insanely fast, which not many people are gonna need. It's got four 4020 blower fans in an array back here, and you've got a manual switch to enable or disable it. When it's set to on, it just turns on and off with the regular part cooling fan on this thing. So these two fans on the sides are hooked up in parallel with these fans on the back and there's a physical switch to enable or disable these additional fans. I think it's a really good implementation here by Elegoo. I'm officially an Elegoo shill now. All right, so that's about all I had to say about this here printer. I think it's a great choice if you wanna get something that's inexpensive and fast and suitable for printing uh, PLA and probably carbon fiber nylon and some other materials. I think this thing's gonna be great for you. If you wanna pick one of these up, make sure to click the affiliate link in the description below even if you don't want to pick one up, just click that link and in case you buy one in the future, then I'll get credit for it. So, um, thanks for watching this episode. It was very straightforward. I don't feel like I need to make this a complicated video. It's just a solid, good printer for $260. So, what you see is what you get. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Actually, wait, there's one last thing I wanted to show you and that's this fluid interface. So let me connect here. I'm just connected to that little wireless router here and now I'm able to communicate with this machine. So, I mean, if you look at this, this is just your basic fluid interface. You can see uh, this is the area where you can drag and drop print jobs to if you want to print some more stuff. You have your console here so you can type all sorts of G-code commands and build in macros into this machine. Uh, you've got all these tuning options. Here's our bed leveling mesh. I did an all right job here. You can see the right side probably needs to be brought down a little bit to make this super flat, but altogether, there's not a whole lot of variance here. And yeah, here's our print job history. You can see they printed some parts before they sent it to me. And then here I've printed out a couple of things. I really like this printer. Here's our printer config file. What the heck? What's with all these config files? I don't know what's going on here, but <laughs> Here's printer.cfg, that's probably the one that's active, and then here's a bunch of weird stuff, I'm not sure what that's for. Um, but yeah, this is full stock clipper on here with fluid, so it's not like what Creality is doing where they're trying to do their own thing and do like clipper fluid or clipper uh, Creality weird stuff. It's just that good old standard interface with all the options and graphs and controllability and tuning. Really good stuff here. And here you can see I can turn the speed up. Let's just turn it up to 200% and see what happens. I'm gonna turn the acceleration up to uh, 500 or 5,000. Just get this thing moving a little bit faster, just for fun. Of course you can have high print quality if you go a little bit slower, but it's always fun to just turn these machines up to crazy values. Let's just listen to this machine for a little bit. It makes fun little noises. I guess the only features that are really missing here is a working Wi-Fi module, maybe an enclosure and a camera when you compare it to the K1 and the P1P or P1S. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, normally I'm a lot more long-winded in these reviews and I wish there was more to say about this machine, but it's just a solid machine that gets the job done and comes in at a very, very affordable price. So yeah. You don't have to pay $500 or $600 or $700 or $800 to get into this high-speed 3D printing scene. You can just pick up one of these relatively affordable clipperized bed slingers that can just print really fast for the money. 
and um, sure it doesn't have an AMS system, but since you're saving like $700 compared to the P1S plus AMS combo, which is kind of like your entry level AMS system through Bamboo Labs, you're going to be saving so much money that you can buy four printers. So, you know, if you want four colors, just load up four different spools of filament in your four printers. Or you can buy one printer and then try and set up one of the open source options for a multi-material unit. Alright, I'm going to stop shilling now. I'm just going to leave you with a time lapse and you can just watch this print do something cool. And uh, I'll say goodbye. Alright, so thanks for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.